Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to be having a look at two audio plugins for Final Cut Pro 10 for helping to improve your voiceovers and your audio quality um, for your voiceover. So basically, the first plugin we're going to be looking at is going to remove or help to remove kind of echo uh, from your voiceovers um, in Final Cut Pro 10. And the second is basically for removing any kind of competing frequencies in the background tracks that you're using in Final Cut Pro 10. So basically, the clear voiceover plugin will be applied to the music in the background and allow you to kind of clean up that audio so that the voiceover can kind of come through more clearly. So we're going to dive right into Final Cut Pro 10, have a look at the clear voiceover and echo remover plugins. Uh, this video is sponsored by FX Factory, so definitely do go and check them out where you can find these two plugins. Uh, but without further ado, let's dive in, have a look at the echo remover and clear voiceover plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. So let's dive into Final Cut Pro and have a look at two plugins that I use a lot for my audio um, when I'm doing voiceovers, which is uh, most of the time for things like tutorials and also for things like the property tour videos and stuff like that that I am doing. Um, I will use uh, these two plugins to kind of clear the voiceover and also clear any echo that you might get um, in different edits that you're working on. So basically here on my timeline at the moment, I have a couple of things set up. So I basically have the original audio track um, set up with no effects, no background music um, set up. Um, and then I have kind of varying degrees of uh, the echo remover um, to remove echo from the audio, the original video audio recording that uh, you can see here. And then the clear voiceover, which removes any competing frequencies between the video track and the kind of background audio track that I've got here. So basically, if you want to listen to this demo, then jump to the end of the video where I kind of play the whole thing through. But we're going to kind of jump through a few sections of this just to listen to some samples. So at the beginning here, we basically have no effects um, for this audio. How we create columns using the add the echo remover. And then also how we and then the background music styles within those columns. So we'll be looking at how we create titles and then eventually the background music with the clear voiceover. So as I said, jump to the end if you want to listen to the whole thing. But basically, we're going to have a look at how I set this up from my camera um, through to kind of adding the effects. And we'll basically see how easy it is to kind of uh, set this up. So we're going to set up a new project here. And we'll call this audio demo version two. So I'm going to drop down the, the video track that we're using as the kind of main video track for this, which is an intro to an InDesign tutorial uh, that I did a little while back. And we're just using the shotgun mic for the main audio track. So I'm just trimming uh, the beginning and end of this down. And with this track, the first thing I need to do actually is select the right audio track. So you'll notice this if you use a shotgun mic or external mics on some of your cameras, that if you come up to the audio options, it's mixed as a stereo audio track, but actually it's only one of those stereo tracks that I want. So basically I'm going to switch this to dual mono and then uncheck dialog two, which is basically the internal camera mic uh, from my XA20 camera. So this is the shotgun mic that I want um, that is going to have the effects applied to it. So the first thing I'll normally do for this is just play it back, have a little listen to the audio, see if the quality is good, check the sound levels and that type of thing. Um, and then if I've got a great track, I might try and save some time and not add any effects. But basically I'm normally adding the crumble pop echo remover, which basically we drop onto the track and we need to enable it. So once we've dropped our echo remover onto the track, then we can see it up in the inspector on the top right. So I'm going to double click here and open this up so it makes it kind of the full height of the screen. And you can see we've got the crumble pop echo remover. So if we click here once, it will allow us to turn the echo remover off or on. Um, and we can also moderate the strength. So I always like to think with effects or any color correction or anything like that, then a little bit less is more. Um, so basically I will try and add less echo removal and just kind of find that point where I need it. Um, we've also got kind of echo removal for the low, mid and high frequencies here. So basically we can kind of target that echo removal um, a little bit. And once that's set up, um, there's not really much more that I'm else that I'm doing there we can modify uh, the kind of output of the audio level and we might want to listen through to it and just check that our audio channel is hovering around minus 12. So basically you can see here everything looks pretty good and we can pause it and close this window. So that's the echo removal for the main video track. And then the next thing we're going to add here, if we come here, we're going to add this fun guitar track uh, to our video. And basically, actually, we'll have this right in the kind of noisier, busier bit of the, the track rather than the intro. 
So if you play this back now, you can hear that basically the voice is really fighting um, with that audio track in the background. And um, basically we have two things there. We have the level of the audio, which we can drop down. And then also we have those competing frequencies between the voiceover track and the audio track itself. So if we firstly just kind of drop the audio levels down, so to around minus 11, um, then when we listen back to it, we'll still find some of those frequencies are fighting with one another um, to kind of really work well. So basically, um, we still need to do a little bit more work to kind of fix this properly. So this is where the clear voiceover effect comes in. So if you've installed it, um, come down to the crumble pop effects and we can just drag this and we're dragging it onto our background audio track and then select that clip. And then we are going to come to our inspector across on the right and click on the show advanced effect editor and basically here in order to activate this we need to press the clear voiceover option um, which will kind of do a scan of your audio and find those competing frequencies and then we have some options here uh, for the strength of this so i'm going to dial this up a little bit so that we can kind of hear the difference there and then we can also you know increase or decrease the mud removal so those competing frequencies and then decide how much punch we want to have in our audio so the output gain for the audio which is our music track in the background and then also if we want to have kind of a bit more bass uh, in the music in the background as well once that's done we're basically finished so now if we bring this back to the beginning we can play this through. Hi there, it's Ben Housel here, and thanks for checking out my InDesign tutorial. So in this lesson, we're gonna be having a look at how we work with columns. So we're gonna be looking at how we create columns um, using the text frame options, and then also how we work with So basically, paragraphs. that is everything uh, for this tutorial. So basically, what you wanna do is, if you are having problems with kind of getting that clear voiceover um, in your audio, um, then have a look at the echo remover. If you kind of hear that echo um, in your recorded tracks, Often I'm not recording in kind of perfect sound booth style conditions. Um, so I get a bit of echo either in like the property videos um, or in even the tutorials that I'm recording here. Um, and then also clearing that, and then also clearing those competing frequencies in the background music that you're using is really handy as well. So I definitely recommend these two plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. Um, there are some other things you can do with the, the kind of built-in effects as well. Um, so if we go to voice here, and scroll down we have things like the voiceover enhancement tool and that's definitely a tool that's kind of worth having a look at as well um, if you want to enhance the voice i'll sometimes add that as well as the echo remover just to kind of give my voiceovers uh, that punchy voiceover feel um, in the edit so have a look at those three plugins it's definitely uh, kind of worth a look and hopefully this will help you get that nice clean sound that you're looking for in your voiceovers Take a look at the examples that follow on at the end of this video and see how things sound with and without the plugins. I've kind of labeled things clearly so you can kind of hear what's happening. Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial. So in this lesson, we're going to be having a look at how we work with columns. So we're going to be looking at how we create columns um, using the text frame options and then also how we work with different paragraph styles within those columns. So we'll be looking at how we create titles that span our columns um, and also looking at how we create quotes with a nice colored backdrop um, so that you can create some nice styling um, for the different columns and column layouts that you'll be working with in Adobe InDesign. Um, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and the lessons and uh, I look forward uh, to seeing some of your work posted to the course board.